Welcome to Unit 4 of Week 2 in the course Open Educational Resources for Online Learning. I am Professor Owajaje Juliet Inegbeji. Now, what is the topic for this unit? The topic for this unit is Pedagogy for Online Learning. What is pedagogy? It's a method or practice of teaching with focus on how to impart knowledge or skills. Let's look at the basic learning theories and pedagogical approaches. Now, first, let's look at behaviorism. Behaviorism, what is their view? The view of the behaviorism is that they are concerned with behavior modification. And to them, behavior modification can come either through reinforcement and reward, punishment or threat, and modeling or imitation. And B.F. Skinner was one of those that did a lot of work on this. And when it comes to online learning, you discover that these approaches equally work so well. So what are the pedagogical approaches you can use? It could be individualistic, participatory, or transmissive. Now, why the pedagogy? In looking at why the pedagogy, if you are using individualistic, remember the learner will be able to learn at his own pace, at his own time. And again, the skill that needs to be measured is going to be measured basically at the individual level to know how well the individual has been able to attain the knowledge or skills that are required. Then the learner should be able to participate in the learning. That learning should be part of it and that is where we talk about the learner centered because you want the learner to participate in his own learning, create his own learning. So whereby the learner participates in his own learning, he will be able to get involved and learn better. Then we talk about the transmissive. How do you get this learning to the learner dealing with the online situation? There are ways you could do this. It could be in form of text. It could be in form of pre-recorded videos or audios that you're going to send to the learners to read at their own pace or time. Then the second one is the cognitivism. And the view of the cognitivism is on mental processing, a whereby the learner can come to terms with existing knowledge or come up with a new knowledge. They are able to process the knowledge that you have given to them. They have gained and come up with a new knowledge that could help them suffice. Now, what are the pedagogical approach that can be derived from this? Could be collaborative, inquiry-based approach, a reflective approach. Why this pedagogy? With collaborative, you could make the learners to learn with others as peers. You could equally collaborate even with the instructors or the facilitators online. And while doing this, learning will be taking place. And in form of collaboration, it can come in group work among the peers, and it can come also during facilitation. You are collaborating especially during the synchronous facilitation, real-time facilitation. Then you talk about the inquiry-based approach. In the inquiry-based approach, you discover that this approach uh, uh, encourages exploration, research, investigation. And in doing this, it can come in form of simulation, demonstration, experiment, field study, and project uh, work. What does this mean? It helps the learner to discover whom he is, the environment, and how to discover the learning and give that learning a meaning that has been acquired. Then we talk about the reflective approach. When you're working on the reflective, we help the learner to evaluate him or herself. You have to evaluate the learning that he has learned. And one way of doing this is what we refer to as self-assessment exercises. Sometimes you can call it brainstorming. Sometimes you can call it quizzes within the test, like some of the ones we have in here. It helps you to evaluate the extent to which you have learned. Then we could use uh, reports. Report writing is another way in which you can evaluate your learning. Their portfolio presentation, whereby you have to use organized file to keep all you have learned within the course of study. And journals. In a journal, you can equally come up to write what you have learned and you present it as a book that others can look at and make their comment. Now, the third one is the constructivism. The view of the constructivist is that for learning to be effective, 
Let learners make meaning out of their learning. Leave learners to make meaning out of their learning. They should be able to construct their own meaning or knowledge based on their experience. So that it should not just be one way approach whereby it is one person that dish out all that they need to know, but allow the learner to interact with their environment and come up with a meaningful uh, the meaning from what they have been able to understand within their own environment. There we have the integrative approach, collaboration, inquiry-based approach that goes with this method. And why this approach? If you are using the integrative approach, it provides learning environment that will help the learner construct learning across their curricula. And with this, remember, they are bringing their experiences to bear. They have listened to the teacher in class or they have read the book given to them. They have watched the videos given to them. And those videos, what will they do with it? They have to draw learning experiences, looking at their own environment to see how this can actually play out within their own environment. And it must be realistic in their own learning environment. Then you look at the integrative approach, which requires the use of authentic and real world example. And again, when you're looking at uh, this requires also online collaboration, whereby you can group students to work together, group learners to work together. They can work together on a document at the same time, think, pair, share, peer teaching, jigsaw method. These are the methods you can use where you are using constructivism. And they are very powerful methods in online learning. Now, the last one we're looking at is a psychoanalyst. In the psychoanalyst, they have the view that values must conform to cultural standards. They are concerned about the cultural value. They are concerned about the social value. And the approach here is reflective approach. You want to make meaning in relation to societal value and personal recognition. Because what you learn, you want to see how actually impact on your personal value, how impact on your social value and your connectivity. These are the basic theories that governs the uh, learning, the pedagogy we use in online teaching. Pedagogical approaches are broadly defined into three pedagogies, teacher-centered, learner-centered, and learning-centered. There is a difference between learner-centered and learning-centered. Now, let's look at the characteristics of teacher, learner, and learning-centered approaches. We are looking at the teacher-centered pedagogy. On the teacher-centered pedagogy, here, the teacher is at the center of the learning process. He stands somewhere and dish out whatever thing he needs to dish out to the students. And to the teacher, he knows it all more than the learners. Then you come to the methods. The methods that are often used, they are lecturing method, rote learning, direct question and answer in the class. You know, somebody comes to class, ask a question, say, who is that person raise up hand? You will respond to the question. Those are the methods used. Now, when you come to the learner center pedagogy, for the learner center pedagogy, the learner is at the center of learning in this instance. And the method used basically hinges all the learning theories, like the constructivism, behaviorism, and the cognitivism. It hinges on it for the way we define it. The learner creates knowledge from prior knowledge. Because at this time, any learner that is coming into learning, you wouldn't see the learner as he knows nothing. No, the learner has had learning experiences within the environment. So therefore, the learner is coming with a proud knowledge. And what does it do with the prior? He has to relate it with the new knowledge. And from the new knowledge, he's able to create another knowledge. And in this case, when you are using learner-centered uh, approach, the teacher facilitates the process. The teacher in this instance does not lecture, but facilitate. And the teacher structure the condition for learning. So in this case, you discover, yes, although it's learner-centered pedagogy, the teacher still needs to come in to structure the learning and guide the process. Then we have the learning-centered pedagogy. There are differences. You have the learner-centered and learning-centered. They are not the same. The learning-centered is a combination of both the teacher-centered and the learner-centered. It recognizes both. 
And in this area, the teacher is the one that has to consider the local context number because it's the one that is going to structure what is going to be done. But in the process of structuring, the learner is at the center of source structure. So I know some people have often asked, when you say learner-centered pedagogy, how can the learner create learning around itself? In this case, the learner is not creating learning just around itself all alone, but supported by the learner, by the, uh, the teacher. That is what the learning-centered pedagogy defines. So it is the teacher that will construct the learning, but while constructing the learning, the learner is at the center of that learning. The learner has major role to play, not the what to consider in applying pedagogical online content. You have to look at the learner's characteristics. You have to know the characteristics of the learners you want to deal with because there are various learners that are coming to the online learning environment. So knowing their characteristics will help you come up with the right pedagogy. Then the learning context. What kind of environment? What are those prevailing things within the environment that they are coming to learn? They will have to look at the learning outcome. What are the stipulated learning outcomes for the learners? That will help you define the right pedagogy that will be used. They will look at the learning activities that are going to be driven by the pedagogy because the learning activities are called from the learning outcome. And the pedagogy that is to be used must meet with the learning activities and meet with the learning outcome. Then the learning environment, again, is coming into pair. The learning environment in this instance may be the elements that you're going to use, the virtual learning space you're going to use. Because the way that the virtual learning space is being designed could determine what type of pedagogy you need to use. Because there are some elements that may not be so friendly with some kind of pedagogy. So you need to look at that to be able then available infrastructure what are the available infrastructure you have because the type of infrastructure you have will equally determine the type of learning uh pedagogy that you're going to apply because there are for infrastructure of such as software that you might need to construct some items and if those softwares are not available you may not be able to construct some kind of basic items that you may need to construct then learning resources what are the available learning resources? So you need to consider all this in line with the mode of learning. That is, are you going to present it as virtual or you are going to present it as blended? When you say blended, the blended need to be defined. Are you taking some part face-to-face -face or part online? And if that is it, then you must define what you want to do online and what you want to do face-to-face. -face. Again, that will help to determine the type of learning that you are going to bring and the type of pedagogy that you are going to put in. Conclusion, the use of OER come in when selecting the learning resources. The selection of learning resources is guided by the learning outcome and the pedagogy. Therefore, the OER selection must meet the stated learning outcome and pedagogy. Thank you for your attention.